This video will review inverse functions. To begin, let's start by defining what the inverse of a function is. An inverse of a function is a relation formed when the independent variable is exchanged with the dependent variable. Put simply, that would be when x and y are switched in positions. If the inverse of a function is also itself a function, then we'll call that an inverse function. The notation for an inverse function is f with a negative one exponent of x. It is not pronounced f of negative one x. It is pronounced the inverse of x. An inverse function is, is often thought of as an undoing function. The reason we would call it an undoing function is that if you take an output value of f of x, perform the inverse operations to it, you'll arrive back at the original function starting value. For instance, if you have an output value f of 4, if you substitute that value into the inverse function, what comes out is the input value. You would get the 4. Or if you take f of negative 2, take that output value, put it into the inverse function, you'll get the negative 2 as the output, which is the starting value from the original equation. It undoes what has already been done. Now how to find an inverse depends on what you're dealing with. If you have a table, the inverse is simply found by switching the inputs and outputs, switching the x and y's. If it's on a graph, it's going to involve a reflection. You're going to reflect the original graph over the line y equals x. When you do a reflection across the line y equals x, that means you're going to switch the x and y's position. So the point x, y becomes y, x. Or for example, if one of the points on the graph is 3, 4, when you do the reflection, it's 4, 3. Or if it's 2, negative 4, it becomes negative 4, 2. If it's from an equation, you're going to switch the positions of x and y's and then solve the new equation for y. Once the y's by itself, we'll use the notation inverse of x. Let's look at some examples. The first two are for both a set of points and then a table. To find these inverses, we're simply going to switch the x and y's. We're going to switch our independent and dependent and dependent variables. So 2, 8 becomes switched, 8, 2. Now the same pattern will follow for the other three. The next one becomes negative 2, negative 3, 6, 1, and then 20, 2, 9. Again, the inverse is simply found by switching the variables. From a table, we group them vertically. The point negative 8, negative 5, when you have the inverse, becomes negative 5, negative 8. And the same for the others. For an equation, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. To begin, we're going to switch f of x, which would be termed y, and the x. The x and the y are going to switch position, in which case you'll get for the first problem, x equals 4y minus 8. I then need to isolate the variable y and get y by itself. To do so, I'll add 8 to both sides, get x plus 8 equals 4y, and then divide by 4. Simplifying this, x divided by 4 is just 1 fourth x. 8 divided by 4 would be 2. So I would get 1 fourth x plus 2. Now that y is by itself, I'll use the inverse notation. The inverse of x is 1 fourth x plus 2. Now I'm writing this one in slope-intercept form because the original problem was in slope-intercept form, and this makes sense to do. For the second problem, again I'll switch the positions of the x and y's, so I get x equals the negative 3 quantity y minus 4 plus 6. I need to isolate y by itself, which means I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, and then you could distribute the negative 3. This would help put the equation in slope-intercept form. Or, instead of distributing, you could divide by negative 3. If you divide both sides by negative 3, this will keep it in point-slope form. Now another way to say the quantity x minus 6 over negative 3 would be to say negative 1 third times the quantity x minus 6. And we see that we're getting the point-slope form back. To finish getting y by itself, we'll add 4 to both sides. Now that y is by itself, I can use the inverse notation. The inverse of x is the negative one-third quantity x minus 6, and then plus 4. Take a moment and try the last one. I'll give you a moment, if you need to, pause, and then restart the video when you're ready. For this one, we'll switch positions of x and y, and we'll get x equals one-sixth of y minus 2. To get y by itself, we'll add 2 to both sides, and we'll get x plus 2 equals 1, 6, y. 1, 6, y is the same as having y divided by 6. The opposite of dividing 6 would be multiplying both sides by 6. Now because I'm multiplying both sides on the left-hand side, I need to put 6 times the quantity x plus 2. 
This will get the y by itself on the right-hand side, so I can use inverse notation. I can say the inverse of x equals the 6 quantity x plus 2. This would be the point-slope form of it, or if you want to use slope-intercept form, you distribute the 6. It would also be okay to say the inverse of x is equal to 6x plus 12. Alright, thank you for watching this video, and I hope that it helped you to understand how to use inverse functions.